Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining us on this video. A subscriber asked a question about how to incorporate the photo gallery add-on into an existing solution with data that already exists. Right here, I have a sample database that has a bunch of pictures, actually only about six pictures, and these are antique computers, something that I find fascinating. And really, it's just a sample file, and I kept it really simple so that the mechanism of the file doesn't get in the way of the learning. I have the default fields here, just a simple single table in this one file. The name of the table is called Photos. There are the normal, what I call housekeeping fields or the default fields when you create a new table. And I've just got two fields so far. I've got a field called Picture, which is a container type field. This actually holds the photo. And then a title field, which holds the title of the photo which I lovingly call computer one, two, three, four, five, six. Nothing special about that. And I just grabbed these photos off the internet and put them into a quick sample file. All right, so the setup is really easy. Now, if you wanna get the gallery view to work with this, that's what we're about to do now. Incidentally, before I go much further, if you wanna learn all about the gallery view and some of the settings and the preferences and how it all works and why it was designed and some use cases, you definitely have to check out our other video. We'll put a link above here, above this video, to a card that'll go to the video where we did a demonstration of that. I think it was Paul that did that demonstration. This is just simply to say, how do I get existing data to connect to that add-on? So that's what we're doing here. Let me click this plus button, which you'll get when you go to layout mode and you expose the add-ons functionality, which is this third tab in. Then click the plus button you'll see the JavaScript type add-ons. The one you want to target is the photo gallery. Then you choose that, and that will add all that schema to this file. And then to incorporate that, you would drag the photo gallery add-on over to the layout. Notice that when I drag it, the body part automatically extends to the total height of the add-on. Just make sure you have it wide enough and tall enough to display the add-on web viewer here in order to at least get started. So I'll go back to browse mode, and what you'll see right away is the fact that the gallery works. It's there, but it's using sample data. You say, well, how did that sample data get there? The sample data actually comes when you incorporate the add-on into your file. So if I go into manage database, here's our original table called photos, but if I look under the tables tab, we actually have two more tables that were just added as a result of the add-on. And not only do we have tables, but we actually have data. So here's a table called photo gallery sample data with nine new fields and 10 new records. And if I double click that to see what's inside, we have some interesting things. Now, in order for us to incorporate our own data with the add-on, you would think, well, I just need to configure it and repoint it to the right place. And you would be right in that uh, assumption, but there's a couple of gotchas in here that you have to be aware of. So if I click on, let me close this for a second. If I click on this top right icon, you'll see that here's the preferences screen. And by default, it's looking at its own sample data so that you can immediately see that the add-on works and you can experiment with it. But if you want your own data, you simply target this to a different location, in this case, the photos table, which we had originally. Now, when you do that, it tries to go look for any additional fields that it sees on that layout that we specified, in this case, the photos layout. And it needs to know the primary key, the photo field itself, which is a base 64 encoded field, which we'll talk about. Then it also needs a scale width and a scale height which is the relative width and height of the image. These are the required fields. Without these being satisfied, you won't be able to do this. So I need, what do I need? Four more fields. I need a primary key and so forth. So the key to having this work correctly, cancel out of that for a second, go back into layout mode on your original layout where your data is, and we need to add those four fields if they're not already there which most likely they aren't because normally people don't think about width and height on their own repository of pictures. Now, it did ask for a primary key. So if you have your own primary key, feel free to use it. 
I'm going to use the one that came with the table when I first set it up, which is called primary key. So I can remove this later after we tie it all in. But for now, I'm going to leave it here on the layout. Uh, if you do want to have it there permanently, just as a reference point, you don't have to have it display on the layout. I can move it into the non-display part of the layout over here on the right, in this right margin, and that'll work equally well. It just needs to be on this layout, doesn't necessarily need to be visible. So it needed the primary key, it needed the title, it needed the width, the height, and this thing called base64. So we'll take care of the base64 last. Let's just go width and height. I'm just gonna create two fields and I'll make them, I think I can make them number fields. So I'll just do width and make that a number and then height, H. There we go. All right, width and height, perfect. And um, I've added those to the system and I just need to add them to the layout. All right, so here we go. I'll put those on the layout for now. So let's go take a look at these preferences again one more time, and we'll start setting this up. I'll go to Photos, Layout, which is where we are here. Primary key, I already know that. I've got that on the layout. The photo field, don't have that yet. It's offering me title and primary key, neither of which are representing the photo. I'll skip that for now, but I do have the width, and the height available. So I'm just missing one more field, this photo field. And if we read closely, it says, if the file is hosted, choose the field holding the image. If local, use a base64 encoded field. So if you are hosting this, I believe it would look for a container field and it would display your container field available to you right away. I happen to not be hosting this, which makes it a little trickier and I'm glad we're doing it this way so that you can learn what it would be like if you were working with just a local file. So it needs the base64, and that's to convert it from a container into text where the web viewer can understand it. So let me close this now, and we'll look at how the sample data works. I think that's the easiest way to do it. I'll just go to the sample data layout, and you can see they have the same idea here, the title, the width and height, the photo itself, and I don't see this on the layout, but let me check. Sure enough, on the right side of this layout, when I go into layout mode, there's the base64 field. Let's go look under the hood to see what this looks like in Manage Database when I look at the base64. It's actually a calculation, and if I look at the options, it's text. So here's the calculation. It's putting this brief prefix, data colon image, forward slash PNG, comma, base64. This is a prefix that tells the web viewer what kind of data to expect. And then here is the calculation converting the information in the container field, which is essentially binary, into uh, base64, which turns it into text, something that the web viewer can chew on and display back as an image. So again, that's only if you're working with a local file. If you're hosting this file, you don't have to do any of the 64-bit conversion or encoding. You just need to point it to the container field on that preference screen you saw. Okay, so let me just copy this information. In fact, let me just get out of there and copy the whole calculation right here from this screen, Command C, and then we'll pop over to our table called Photos, and I'll Command V and put that base64 calculation in there. I'll double click it and we'll repoint it to the field that we need. So I'll just take off the comments so that we're no longer commenting this calculation out. We'll keep the same prefix, that's all good. We even keep the same calculation, which is the base64 calc, and it's looking for the field photo. We want it to look for our field, which we call picture here in our local file. And make sure the text is the calculation result, make sure it still formats it as text. You do have one other option here, which I'll just do, it's, a, an, as, it's an aside. You could just do a regular base64 calc and then point it to the picture, like you see here but they've included this RFC option, yet they don't specify the RFC option, they keep it blank. So this base64 picture is doing the same thing as this base64 is without the specified RFC format type. In any case, that's more trivia, but this will work. We'll leave it just like this. I'll push okay, and now we have a base64 field which looks at our container field, which we've called picture. So that was a long-winded way of saying, this is how we're going to get the pictures to work. I'm going to go back to our main layout and make sure that that base64 field is on 
the layout. And I think we're good. I'm okay to display the width and height. Those can stay on the layout because we may want to tweak that. And I think that's it. Okay, so let's go back in here and reassign this one last time. We'll go to Photos. We'll go to the primary key, which is our primary key. Go to the photo field, which it's now seeing the base 64 field, so we're in good shape there. We'll go to the width and the height. Save. And go to upper record, down a record. And now we've got some data coming in here, looking good. Some of our own data. All right, now when I scroll up using the, the mouse here, you can see that all my pictures are sort of skewed. They're scaling to their original size, whether they fit inside the container here, the uh, web viewer or not. So what I can do is just sort of calibrate this a little better. I'm going to do, let's say, a 500 width and a 400 height. That'll give us sort of a relative orientation and also tame down these image sizes a bit. Let's see if that worked. No, it didn't. And that's only because I haven't applied this to all the records. So let me go to record two here and we'll do a quick replace. Replace field contents so that all of them have a width of 500 and then all of them have a width of 400. So records, replace field contents and replace. Okay, and let's take a look. There we go. So now this has redrawn itself. This picture is a little skewed because it's out of orientation, but the rest of these are starting to look good. The gallery here at least works with our own data and we've made huge progress here in just a few minutes. Uh, again, to recap what we did, we had an existing photo and a title field in a file. We added the add-on. We moved the add-on to the layout, and then we made sure we had the, the required fields. Those required fields were, first we had to specify the layout, then we had to pick a primary key. We needed the photo field, and we used base64 because the file was local. Then we needed a width and a height, which I'm putting in as a number. There are other options here, which you can learn about in our other video as well. As, and there's some additional settings here if you wanted to change the margin or the columns. If I wanted to go to a two column, I could do that. I can also pick the direction, whether it be row or column, based on the order that it lays out. This time I'll do column. Yeah, now I have a two column option. Also, you'll note that when you click on any one of these pictures in the gallery, it will bring up a card window and show you the details of your actual layout. So chances are you'd want your gallery object, your web viewer gallery in its own dedicated layout and your detail for that picture and any other details you wanna store in a separate layout. Generally speaking, you don't put the gallery view with the, with the detail view. I have them here side by side as a matter of setup, but ideally in the end, you'll want to dedicate a layout for this. All right, that concludes our lesson on how to get your own photo data working with the gallery view or the gallery add-on, because it's called the photo gallery add-on in Claris FileMaker Pro.